All the technologies you're going to see here now are real. To first tell you the story about this uh, little girl named Dana. She's very special for me because she's my daughter. And Dana was born with a leg condition requiring uh, frequent surgery. Surgeries today are complicated and they're often very risky. Now let's imagine a few years uh, into the future, into the near future hopefully, Dana will arrive to the hospital for her uh, due surgery. And instead of being prepped for anesthesia for the OR, the surgeon will just take a syringe. Inside the syringe, there are millions of tiny robots, of tiny machines that will be injected into Dana's bloodstream. They will autonomously locate the place they need to be in. They will excise out the injured tissue. They will remove dead cells. Then they will stimulate and guide the regrowth of healthy cells across those tissue gaps. They will release drugs that um, relieve pain and reduce inflammation. Um, when these robots uh, have completed their, their job, they'll simply disintegrate and disappear from her bloodstream the next day. So these nanobots have been envisioned in the past 30 years by people like Eric Drexler and Robert Freitas and Ray Kurzweil. Today I'm going to show you that these robots exist here in Israel. And I'll show you this syringe, so what, uh, which I brought from my lab. So this syringe has inside it a thousand billion robots. So these robots are each 50 nanometers uh, long, which you can, as you can see in this um, slide under the microscope. 50 nanometers is about 2,000 times thinner than the thickness of your hair. Okay, and um, uh, these, these robots were born actually three years ago in a research I did with Sean Douglas, now a UCSF professor. But over the past year and a half, in my group at bar -Line University, we've been developing and testing robots for a variety of medical and therapeutic tasks. We've, in, we've invented ways of making them safe for use and non-immunogenic, and we learn how to tune their stability in our bloodstream to fit either short-term or long-term, even days-long medical procedures. We are using the perfect, most beautiful molecule on Earth, at least in my opinion, which is DNA. And in fact, every part of the robot, every part of our nanorobots, moving parts, axes, locks, chassis, software, everything is made from DNA molecules. And the technology that enables us to do this originated 30 years ago in the pioneering works of Nadrian Seaman, culminating seven years ago in the works of Paul Rothman from Caltech, which was also featured in TED. And it's called DNA origami. 